good evening from Bangladesh. Those who are watching us from the different parts of the world, a warm welcome to our closing session of Women Entrepreneurship Congress 2020. We are about to conclude our three days power packed sessions. I hope you have enjoyed and learned from our session. We are honored and proud to have the presence of Ms. Selima Ahmed, Honorable Member of Parliament, the People's Republic of Bangladesh, and Ms. Tina Zabin, Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, Startup Bangladesh. The theme of today's session is empowering women through entrepreneurship. Before starting our conversation, I would like to give an overview of the session. The Women Entrepreneurship Congress 2020 is organized by Daffodil International Uni University in association with Global Entrepreneurship Week Bangladesh and Female Innovators Hub. Now I would like to start our session, but before to that one, I would like to introduce our honorable speakers in front of you. Ms. Selima Ahmed, the Honorable Member of Parliament, is an entrepreneur and a business leader. She is the President and Founder of Bangladesh Women Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And she is the Vice Chairperson of Niloy Nital Group. She developed more than 60,000 women entrepreneurs in our country. She is the former director of Bharata Bank Limited, Shonali Bank Limited, and Bangladesh Development Bank Limited. Her work has been recognized by many awards, including Oslo Business for Peace 14. She has been awarded with Jean J. Kickpatrick Award 2013, Islamic Development Bank Prize 2012, and Pio Darshani Award 2012. She has a lifelong mission to empower women and extraordinary contribution to promoting women economic empowerment in Bangladesh. We cordially welcome her to our session. And our, our another speaker we have with us, Ms. Tina Zabin, who is the founding managing director and CEO of Startup Bangladesh Limited a public limited company focused in venture capital investment and wholly owned by the government under the ICT mission. She has assisted the ICT ministry in policy and investment initiatives with other governments and private industries. She found her passion in partnership and flow through entities in the private equity industries. I would like to welcome them to our closing session. So welcome them to our session. So honorable member of parliament, Sally Mohammed. Ma'am, you have organized uh, the first Women National Business Agenda 2009 and successfully steered all the stakeholders to make the WNBA declaration. You have done so many things, financial, financial credit, you have bringing the women entrepreneurs in front. So how actually, can you please share us something about these issues, how you actually empower women entrepreneurs in Bangladesh? Thank you very much. Let me uh, congratulate uh, Daphne. International University for organizing this very important event. We are all celebrating International Women Entrepreneurs uh, Day, which actually started two days before. And <clears throat> I think one of the things is very important for women is uh, uh, the sisterhood, uh, the relationship between women to women, because many things which we understand about each other, especially in this part of the world, uh, as we miss equality, as we miss uh, uh, that uh, inequal environment, uh, as we miss uh, the opportunity, I think uh, 
we need to understand that what is our issues are. And when we, I formed the Women's Chamber of Commerce in 2001, one of the issue was that actually what is our agenda? There's so many women entrepreneurs was coming up and saying that someone is saying I need market access, someone is saying I need to sell my product, someone says I'm selling handicaps but I want to do other type of business. Uh, someone is saying I, I, I used to get some small credit from microfinance, but I need now more uh, credit, more bank loan, but how we can get it? Because bank doesn't give uh, loan to us and the interest rate is high. And I, 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 we can't give collateral because mostly women doesn't have property in, in their name. So we actually thought that discussions amongst the divisions. So what we did from all the district, we had uh, the divisional programs and we consulted with 180 NGOs who are uh, dealing with women entrepreneurs. And uh, we consulted with about uh, 1,700 women entrepreneurs. Uh, that what is actually your agenda? And there was a list of agendas. Uh, but we want, we said, no, you have to prioritize. And when we're doing the prioritize, and I said three prioritization, uh, you have to do it. And I believe in democracy. I believe in people's voice. So the agenda was, uh, you know, capacity building, access to finance, social barriers. But I think ultimately the women entrepreneurs did the right thing to uh, to rate. So the first uh, priority was social barriers. They say, even if I have bank loan or business, if my society doesn't permit me, my family doesn't permit me, then I need a gender-friendly environment. So the first was social barriers. Second was capacity building. And they said, even if I have social support. And if I don't know how to run a business, if I don't know uh, what, what is the market access and what the opportunities and I don't know the sort of analysis to do a business, then what I can do? So the th second was capacity building. And the third was access to finance. So you can understand that the access to finance is very important. But if you don't know um, about your business plan, um, if you uh, don't know how to um, uh, give uh, to a banker about your uh, uh, cash flow um, uh, information, the bank will never give you a loan. Uh, uh, so these three agendas was uh, identified and then we started lobbying with the government to see that whatever the policies that they had, uh, we wanted to see that policies are executed, but also we wanted to see that new policies come. Uh, we are still working uh, every time with seeing that new policies need to come. And really in this COVID-19 situation, we are also working and talking with the government to have separate policies for, for the COVID-19 affected women entrepreneurs. Thank you so much, Madam, for the initiatives you have taken for the female entrepreneurs in Bangladesh. Now, I would like to know from Ms. Tina Javin, Madam, to know about the investment scenario of, for female entrepreneurs in Bangladesh. Thank you so much, Bhu Chatter. Um, Assalamu alaikum, Honorable uh, Member of Parliament, Ms. Salima Ahmed. Um, and a very, very warm welcome and thank you to uh, Daffodil University and Women um, Entrepreneurship Congress for putting together such an inspiring and encouraging and timely initiative. I also see Asif Iqbal here from Daffodil University. Asif, you have done a fantastic job and keep it up. Um, you know, before I answer your question, I must say, that um, with this COVID, uh, look at this beautiful stage um, that, you know, where beauty is standing and anchoring this program. So that is, you know, the power of women. That uh, uh, using technology, first of all, uh, we have this, uh, we are reaching out to 120 countries, thousands of women and viewers um, in Bangladesh. Um, Ms. Ahmed is uh, joining us. Uh, from Dubai. I am joining from Bangladesh and um, uh, beauty there is uh, connecting with so many people. 
So, um, and also, you know, um, we are talking about women. We have the anchor is a woman, and it's just wonderful. We did not see that 20 years ago, 10 years ago. We are seeing it now. And that is the uh, power of technology, the power of social awareness, right? Um, and that is about power of digital Bangladesh. Um, I'm sure our honorable MP will agree that, you know, um, uh, digital Bangladesh has become a reality. And in that digital Bangladesh, you know, going to your question, um, how, how are the women entrepreneurs doing and what else they need to do and how the government, public, private environment can help them? So first of all, um, let me just um, say uh, from the angle of uh, women startups, um, because, you know, I basically work a lot with startups in, who, are, who are in Bangladesh, Bangladeshi startups. Um, so a couple of success stories, you know, flagship bearers of Bangladesh startup ecosystem, Shopa, the founder, one of the founders is Sifa, um, and you know, a woman. Uh, and who is, you know, representing the Bangladeshi startup ecosystem globally, who just, uh, Shop Up just closed a fund, even during this pandemic, a $22 million fund um, uh, financing round um, just recently. Um, the other woman investor or founder is Shahoj Maniha Kader, um, who has been a pioneering woman entrepreneur in the startup ecosystem, has been a flag bearer. Um, and we must uh, also uh, mention that thousands of women, um, micro uh, entrepreneurs, who are working in a platform like Sheba XYZ, who are providing uh, different, uh, you know, day-to-day -day different type of services, and also you know the hundreds of thousands of MSMEs who are attached to the shop up platform, uh, who are uh, being, as um, our honorable MP just mentioned, that you know these are the micro merchants who wants to sell some, um, either some boutique type of product, or they want to venture into some other type of uh, businesses. So, you know, um, in, in short, um, these are some flag bearers, they are doing fantastic, but, we don't have enough of them, right? We have to make sure that we have thousands of shop ups. We have thousands of shahoj. Uh, and we have many, many of beauty actors, right? And many, many more, um, you know, uh, entrepreneurs and uh, pioneers, promoters, uh, such as, you know, uh, Ms. Selima Ahmed. I think those are the ones, those are the type of role models, those are, those are the type of people we need. Um, uh, going back to you know what we are seeing in the uh, startup ecosystem, uh, just a comparison. Uh, about four years ago, when we launched the uh, specifically a product, a project which is, uh, who is which is called Idea Project Innovation Design Entrepreneurship Academy, which has been um, uh, kind of envisioned under our uh, extremely visionary leader our um, architect of digital Bangladesh and national ICT advisor, Mr. Shajib Wajib Joy, and has been executed by the extremely uh, skillful leadership of our ICT state minister, Mr. Zunayad Ahmed Polo. Um, four years ago, you know, this project was launched. At that time, uh, there were about 273 startups. And now after four years, um, uh, it fueled you know, the whole startup ecosystem, it fueled what Dacodil is doing now, you know, um, encouraging entrepreneurship. And now we have 2,500 plus active startups. And we also have in that idea project, you know, one of the first, um, I still remember, one of the women founder startups we invested in, it was called Monel Bundu. And Monel Bundu, during COVID, um, uh, uh, helped thousands of women in their mental crisis. So that is how women investors are doing, although we have a long way to go. 
Thank you so much, madam. Now I would like to go back to our honorable member of parliament, Ms. Selim Mohammed, madam, to know about the initiatives that you have taken from the Bangladesh Women Chamber of Commerce, because we know that you have been awarded with Islamic development back in 2012 for women's contribution to development in recognition of outstanding leadership. So can we know a little bit about uh, this and what are the initiatives you have taken from Bangladesh Women Chamber of Commerce? Let me first say that, you know, why Bangladesh Women Chamber of Commerce was formed. <coughs> And to list what they are going, uh, what their position is uh, in the society. There are their states, uh, their existence and rights, and women uh, uh, become more more experienced. Experienced uh, a country like Bangladesh, where mostly uh, women uh, were earlier days used to get married at a very young age, or you know doing um, mainly graduation, and even now in the uh, rural areas, women um, and get. Um, married at so but what about them uh, because ultimately we want to see this world as equal world and without economic empowerment uh, equality cannot be possible and uh, I think entrepreneurship is one of the uh, way where we can see that we can bring women into empowerment and uh, because in my personal life also because I uh, uh, many of you know that I was married when I was in in uh, studying in the 12th grade I became a mother when I I was just uh, going to the university uh, I already became a mother when I was admitted in the university so uh, as a mother uh, as a daughter and as a wife, I've seen that it's it's difficult to manage house and workplace. But I want to be important because I have seen that without money, without your own resources, you become so helpless, uh, uh, you become voiceless, and that equality doesn't exist. So for me, it was flexibility of ours. Uh, nowadays, uh, you know, many offices uh, and many corporate has. Uh, uh, in our entrepreneurs can be because without bringing them So without bringing them into the mainstream, they, they can never be uh, uh, important. So uh, I thought of forming a chamber of commerce, which is not uh, legally actually allowed according to the Trade Ordinance Act. So I had to go to the ministry sabbaths every day, every day. And the ministry said the total Bangladesh Human Chamber of commerce and industry. Then I said our, that our father of the nation, Bhavamandu Sheikh Punjib Rahman, in, in, uh, in our constitutions, um, has given equal rights to men and women. So, and also in our constitution, it is there that if anything um, need to be done to bring uh, benefits for women and children, the country must give it. 
So with that rights, I said, you have to have a special law. And you know, there was a gadget net notification and the women's shimmer was temporarily given for one year. So every year we used to renew. And now you can see so many women chamber has come up. So someone has to take that trouble. Someone has to cry in the night and become a fighter in the in the day, which I had to do. Uh, there was Ben's uh, uh, Apex Trade Bureau. They also said they didn't want to have a women's chamber of commerce. They said, why is a separate chamber of commerce for women? They can come and work with us. But I said, no, we have many issues which we can't talk. We, can, we cannot talk about our uh, uh, in-laws uh, problem. We cannot talk about our domestic violences. We cannot talk about dowries and jutuk and all these things. So we have to have a separate chamber, of course, where we can share, not only it is a business, it is about our relationship, it is about knowing each other, it is about having a, a platform now for women entrepreneurs, so they become comfortable, they become confident, and they become competent, and with that uh, chamber of commerce uh, was formed. You know, um, I think... Uh, um, I think um, maybe I did it from the women's chamber, of course, because that Bangladesh women chamber led to many small, small national uh, chambers. We could change um, and the government has agreed to ultimately give us and uh, to be even in the court to fight to have this woman's chamber of commerce. It, is, it was like a baby uh, for, for me because I had to nurture uh, because there were so many people they wanted to kill this baby. They didn't want to have this woman's chamber of commerce. And now everyone is so proud of this chamber. Because we have to, that is one of the things which we all women face, that you have to prove yourself first. You cannot say that it's my dream. And that's why I always say that, you know, we have to act like a fighter. We have to build our capacity. Because when a soldier goes to a war field, uh, they build their capacity, right? So we also have to uh, build our capacity. We need to know how to write a business plan. We need to know to do, do our, our accounting. During this COVID situation, we understood, uh, which I was telling and our board was telling so many of our uh, members that try to know and use technology. They used to say, okay, a smartphone is enough. But no, there's so many apps you can use, so many ways you can uh, do your business. And now they're saying, yes, we miss that opportunity, but it is never ending. You can again learn about it. So capacity building is, is so important. So I always tell everyone, don't fall in love. You know, you cannot just uh, close your eyes and cannot be, uh, you can love your uh, dream or you want to fulfill it, but you need to have a business plan. You need to know how to, uh, do your marketing. You need to, as I said, you need to do the sort analysis. So the Omi Chamber started with 24 members. Now we have 7,000 members. We're very proud that we do not only uh, have declared the Women's National Business Agenda, but we have also brought two separate policies, which is one having a separate uh, bank loan for women entrepreneurs and having women's dedicated desk uh, in uh, all banks and also have a separate budget um, uh, in our national budget. Women entrepreneurs um, um, are important because they can improve the economic growth uh, and stability within a country. Uh, as they will generate employment. And by giving tax and VAT, um, the country uh, generate revenues. So uh, 
when we all were uh, working uh, to see Bangladesh not only as a LDC, but to see as a middle income country, and then later on not as a middle income country, but to see as a developed country. And how it can happen? You have to use all your human resources, right? And that is women entrepreneurs. Women entrepreneurs also, I think, inspire other women. Yes. Uh, to start businesses because uh, and that actually reduced the gender gap uh, in workplace. Uh, I remember one of them, our member who became a member uh, uh, the first day and I said, uh, what, what is your feelings? What is your reaction? And she said, today I'm feeling I'm not alone. So uh, that sisterhood is, is uh, very important. And um, as I said that, um, uh, you know, that uh, Men and women entrepreneurs uh, uh, focus actually uh, in in uh, indifferently. You can say, okay, entrepreneurship is should be uh, is same for uh, everyone, but it is different because our constraints are different. And the constraint which a woman face, a man doesn't face, uh, uh, including our psychological and cultural factors um, are, are there for women because many things which men doesn't fight, we have to fight uh, in-house, out-house, everywhere. Uh, but um, I, I must thank uh, uh, Bangladesh government, our honorable prime minister, uh, Sheikh Hasina, who has been been so uh, to the that in Bangladesh that we have a special economic zone, 100 economic zone are coming up. And there is a separate facilities and reduction uh, for uh, women entrepreneurs. So we are, we are actually seeing uh, and um, feeling that the uh, so many micro women entrepreneurs uh, uh, will uh, who has started this, uh, but uh, they actually has become so confident. Um, and uh, in the, at home, um, they say that before um, uh, being into entrepreneurship, a child that. Um, if the father wants to give an early marriage, she, the mother who earns, she can say, no, um, I want to uh, see uh, <clears throat> and educate my daughter. <clears throat> I don't want to put her into the same shoes, the journey I have been. So that voice can only be heard <clears throat> or can only be taken by the society or the family when uh, a woman um, can earn or have become Thank you so much, Honorable Member Thank of Parliament, Mr. So Rima much. Ahmed. So inspiring words you have said regarding empowering women entrepreneurship. You have brought the women into the table and they get their voice. Thank you so much. Now I would like to know from Tina Zabin, Madam, regarding investment because you know the after having a startup bangladesh our investment scenario has been changed even i can see that many of the female entrepreneurs are coming and they are growing because of the investment or the funding that you are providing from the government side can you please share this information to our entrepreneurs so that they actually get the awareness Thank you, Beauty. Um, I mentioned earlier about the IDEA project. So uh, IDEA project um, is a grant program which provides $10,000 equal um, about 10 lakh taka, about $12,000 worth of grant um, to uh, startups. And uh, although we don't really have a specific quota for women entrepreneurs, we do keep in mind when these grants are awarded that you know there is proper representation and there is gender equity as well as um, uh, representation of the underrepresented um, community. So.
So a grant, you know, that is just to uh, kind of uh, jumpstart uh, the startups and to see, uh, fund it, fund their prototype building. And the next phase is Startup Bangladesh Limited. As you mentioned, Startup Bangladesh Limited is a pioneering initiative by the uh, government of Bangladesh. And we are extremely grateful to our honorable prime minister, Sheikh Hasina, for providing us this, um, this um, uh, fund. It's about 500 crore uh, has been allocated to the Startup Bangladesh Limited Venture Capital Fund. And what we do uh, in Startup Bangladesh is that we do equity funding. So um, what does that mean? It means that, you know, we provide um, funding to seed stage startups, growth stage startups, and in different uh, amount. So if you're a seed stage startup, we provide a maximum of uh, one crore. Uh, and in return, we get equity. And for growth stage startups, we take five crore for each round of financing. Um, and um, also what we do is we also provide funding or we get become investor in a startup through co-investment mechanism. And we can also be a partner in a startup through a fund, another fund, being a partner in another venture capital fund. So, which is fantastic because, you know, what, um, what IDEA project was doing, it was kind of giving the money to, to test the idea, to build the prototype. But then once you are done with that, um, you know, where would you get the money to really start the business, right? To get the machineries, to hire the office uh, workers and to, you know, get uh, the office set up and also to um, start selling your services or products. So for that, you either need bank loan, which you cannot get because you cannot, you, cannot, you don't have any collateral. Um, so startups usually don't have collateral. Their only asset is this idea, this product, this services. So, um, so here comes Startup Bangladesh and Venture Capital Fund, private equity, that's the structure. Um, and Startup Bangladesh provides that type of financing so they can, you know, take that prototype and test it in the market, um, does a, a test to the clients and kind of uh, do, a, kind of do a pilot testing of uh, this product or services. And once you are a bit established, when you want to scale up, uh, at that point, you know, you are, you are called a growth stage startup. And at that point, you go... Uh, for further and higher amount of um, funding and uh, Startup Bangladesh can also do that. And we have, we also provide, you know, in-kind um, support. So which means that we, we connect you to networks, uh, investors, clients, uh, where, you know, as a startup, you can go and sell your services. Right now, what we are doing with about 25 plus education technology startups, we have facilitated a partnership with our education ministry. Um, and this happened um, uh, due to, we are extremely grateful to our education minister, um, our honorable education minister, Dr. Dipumoni uh, MP, and to our uh, deputy education minister, Mohibul Hassan Chaudhary Nofel. Um, and they have granted this project to our startups, 25 plus startups, where we are providing online video classes to um, uh, secondary school students, uh, technical and madrasa students. Um, so that we also provide that type of facilitator services um, or outlets. Uh, so, you know, that's not direct financing, but that is bringing in, connecting with your client. Um, so um, basically, you know, that's where the journey started and we are very excited. Um, as far as women goes, I think that, you know, echoing, um, um, our Honorable MP's uh, sentiment is that women are the change makers and women needs to advocate uh, other women. You know, we need to push and drive, inspire other women. And successful women should always try to pull up um, the less fortunate one. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Madam, for the wonderful speech. Uh, I, 
lastly i would like to know from the honorable member of parliament uh, can you please talk about the government initiatives already you have talked about a lot more government initiatives but is there any kind of new initiatives that our participant must know and they get to know what is happening around the world and what is happening in bangladesh just in few words if you can share we would be humble to you well, thank you very much. Uh, the Bangladesh government, uh, as you know, that uh, they believe in private sector development. As Bangladesh uh, generates employment, 70% uh, of the employment generates by the private sector. And uh, therefore, more women uh, comes into entrepreneurship, more employment will be generated. Uh, uh, as you know, that in, in Bangladesh uh, government, uh, women entrepreneurs during the COVID situation, they can have two to four percent uh, bank interest rate uh, to get a bank loan. Uh, and also, other than that, in every uh, branches of the you know, commercial banks, there there is a woman's dedicate and there is a designated person who deals with the women entrepreneurs. Every branch must give at least one entrepreneur every month a bank loan. Also, in the uh, um, uh, there is a, a SME foundation where uh, every year many trainings uh, has been held. We uh, Bangladesh government uh, uh, also facilitate uh, trade fairs through which women entrepreneurs participate both uh, in domestic market, regional, and international trade fairs. Um, we this year and the last year the government has announced 100 crore taka, which is, I think, $12 million or more than that uh, for a startup. So any startup who has a good business plan can get access to bank loan. For the women entrepreneurs also, it's $12 million has been given in the national budget for which women entrepreneurs can build their capacity for which they can have uh, access to our finance. And in the um, uh, Ministry of Industry for Women Entrepreneurs, um, there is a uh, reduction of uh, taxes. There is a, the, uh, availability of uh, uh, industrial plots. So there is a separate quota uh, for the women uh, industrialists. So every segment, if you see um, uh, uh, in the cross-cutting of all ministries, the women entrepreneurs issues has been addressed by our prime minister and the army uh, government. Uh, uh, and uh, not only that, uh, from Bangladesh actually, many countries are learning and trying to adapt uh, Bangladesh government policies as, so that they can improve uh, and adapt our, our, our policies. Uh, but from that, I'd like to say uh, that uh, we would like to see that also, as you know, that in the economic zone, as I said, the industrial plot has been uh, given. But in all board, where Prime Minister is the uh, head of uh, like Bangladesh Investment Development Authority, Bangladesh Economic Zone uh, Authority, uh, and many others like that. Uh, uh, a representative um, uh, from Women's Chamber of Commerce and uh, women entrepreneurs are always there. So uh, anywhere there is a decision, we can participate. And uh, in the bank also, uh, earlier uh, or in the National Bank, uh, we never uh, have seen uh, that, uh, that uh, in Bangladesh uh, um, earlier uh, women entrepreneurs uh, used many like we had a first woman entrepreneur who was a chairman in Janata Bank. Uh, we were directors in the in the in the um, in the bank. So everywhere you, if you go, you will see that there are policies uh, for women entrepreneur. So I will just end with uh, with uh, saying that there are many limit limitations, but you have to. Uh, understand and women must feel that all limitations are self-imposed. Society, family, um, country, can or the world 
can bring limitations. But, but if you don't impose that, then you can always uh, uh, bring and break uh, that limitation. And, uh, uh, you know, there is no special ingredients uh, in the recipe for success. But I think uh, work hard, grab opportunities, and follow your passion. Um, uh, love your country. Uh, I think Bangladesh is a beautiful country where men uh, are and women are working together. Uh, and also for women entrepreneurs, it is not only income generation. It is many, it is to lift the many millions of Bangladeshi out of poverty. It is to uh, see that uh, equality exists in the society. It is to fulfill the dream is to make a Shonar Bangla uh, of Bangabundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Honorable Member of Parliament, Ms. Selim Ahmed. Now I would like to invite Ms. Tina Zabin, Madam, uh, to talk about as the theme is women, empowering women through entrepreneurship. Can you please share this thing with our female entrepreneurs? And what are the things we can do on this issue? Thank you. Thank you so much, Beauty. Um, I think that um, our honorable um, member of parliament uh, already uh, kind of uh, touched on some of the points, uh, but I, I believe that, you know, um, I, I'm, I think a lot of women, uh, women are actually listening right now. So, um, so I, you know, what, what we need to think about is that we can have all kinds of support from the government, from the private industry. Um, we can enable, uh, provide enabling platform. We can provide the financing, the skill development, all kinds of stuff. But um, as a person, if you, as a woman, you know, if you don't um, see yourself, respect yourself as a human being, and feel that that you are worth um, you are worth um, actually you know um, invaluable, and you have to unleash the power within yourself, um, and you have to take the ownership of your own um, path, own development, own progress. And yes, the path is not easy. For many of us, probably it has been a bit easier. We are very fortunate. But for most of us, you know, it will be extremely difficult and has been difficult. But you must keep on dreaming and um, must, uh, you know, stay focused. Do not give up. Um, and when you are successful, you have the responsibility to make a contribution to the society because you always need to think about that. Like I said, uh, women are extremely powerful change makers and they actually can positively, extremely positively and in a very strong manner impact the very fabric of the society. A very enlightened mother, a guy that nurtures her family um, to have a better life. A visionary female CEO is a role model for thousands and hundreds of thousands of women all across um, you know, um, the country and the globe. Um, a far-sighted politician, we have one right uh, with us, um, can change the trajectory of a nation, right, towards a more inclusive, tolerant, and gender balanced and humane society and a country. So as a woman, you know, we must believe in our innate power to do good. So we can unleash that power towards a better, prosperous, country and a world. So we need to have that ideology within us and then we can look around us and uh, there are lots of resources and you have to do research. You know, there are public resources, government resources, trainings, um, and you avail that, okay? And programs like such as this, I think that women, lots of women are listening. You know, don't just listen and then forget about it. Take action. Okay, these programs are put together so you listen, you are you become aware, and then you take an action and practice it. Yes, 
right? Thank so you can become an empowered woman. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Yes, we need to implement what we learn. And now I would like to invite Honorable Member of Parliament for the closing remarks for the session. Let me first again, again congratulate uh, everyone, uh, women of the world, who are into entrepreneurship because uh, we entrepreneurs take risk, we generate employment, you know, we give tax and that, uh, so we try to uh, build uh, a prosperous country. So congratulations to each one of you. Um, uh, we must believe in ourselves. Uh, we must trust that we can do it. Uh, I think women, as a woman, we should be proud of ourselves. And, Today in this Women Entrepreneurship Congress 2020, I'd like to say that 120 uh, countries are connected, and this is called networking. And networking connects with people, and people connects with people, with ideas, with inspirations, with motivations, with love, with uh, friendship. Uh, so this networking is very important because networking actually can build and generate uh, the confidence, uh, the competence uh, amongst uh, the women. So uh, I think it is always important that we should network uh, and entrepreneurship is the best way for any woman, any sort of business uh, you do, but be smart, be clever, but try to be honest because honesty is the best way uh, to be successful because it gives you sustainability because the business can become profitable, you can lose also your business, but you, your honesty will remain. And that hard work will pay off one day. So thank you again. And all of you stay safe, stay healthy, and we will rock the world. So not to worry, uh, even if a mountain comes and try to stop us, we all over the world, we women will break it and we will move forward. Thank you again. Joy Bangla. Thank you, Honorable Member of Parliament. Definitely, we will rock the world with the togetherness, with the unity we have, and we can show that Bangladesh can do something for the women entrepreneurs. Any closing remarks from Tina Zabin, Madam? Thank you so much. You know, after uh, this very inspiring comment from our honorable member of parliament, I don't think I, you know, I don't think I can add much more, but what I would, um, I will just, you know, uh, finish off with a, a more of a forward looking comment. And that is, you know, Bangladesh is symbolized by a red sun, right? Among a green meadow. We started in 1971 and we are going to celebrate the 50th birth anniversary of this very beautiful and unique country. And right now we are in Mujibir, which is the 100th birth anniversary of Bangabundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Um, so we are going through an extremely um, special historical time for this country. And um, um, obviously uh, COVID pandemic um, put a damper in everything, but um, you know, it challenged us and it um, also showed to the world that among all these odds, we were able to move forward, forge ahead, uh, when a lot of the economies around the world were struggling and you know, actually uh, slipping um, back, we actually made progress. Um, so with all of this, you know, what we want to think when we are, you know, thinking about going forward is that we have come a long way. The country came a long way. And um, right now it is, it is kind of a roaring Royal Bengal Tiger, ready to take off. And yes. as we enter the 50th anniversary and for all the women um, uh, all around the world who has joined us and all of you, the distinguished delegates and everybody, you know, thank you so much. 
Um, I do believe that as a country, we are entering the high seas uh, with a very, very beautiful rising sun lightening our adventures forward. Thank you. Thank you so much, Madam. And thanks to our honorable member of parliament, Ms. Selima Ahmed. You have said so many inspirational so words. Lastly, and we I'd are... like to say, yes. lastly, I'd like to say that, you know, uh, take ideas, but no one's opinion uh, or, or rejection should stop you. Move forward. The world is beautiful. Thank you. Oh, maybe we have disconnected. I can hear you. Uh, yes. Uh, okay, so maybe we have missed our honorable member of parliament, but uh, that brings the end of our session. Thank you so much. I am beyond grateful and thankful to our member of parliament and to you, madam, for giving us your valuable and precious time. So that's the end of our session. But what I can say is that, yes, we together can change the world. And I am thankful, not only thankful, thank would be less to our audience, those who are watching us more than 150 plus countries. Thanks would be less for our team. Thanks would be less for all the speakers around the world. So still, I would like to pay my thanks to all of you that you have joined our session and gives a value to our session. And taking this session to the another height. I, I am Beauty Akhtar, the Congress Chair, signing out from the Women Entrepreneurship Congress 2020. But I'm not gonna, gonna go anywhere. See you in the next year, Women Entrepreneurship Congress 2021. Thank you all.